Hi, and welcome everyone. I'm John Spear, founder and VP of Quality and Regulatory at Greenlight Guru. Preparing your quality management system for a seamless approval process to transfer your device into manufacturing can be challenging for the most experienced medical device developer. In this episode, I will explain how you can navigate this important step through proven best practices to help you through the process. While in the approved phase, you'll be preparing your QMS for a successful transfer to manufacturing, you'll also define and implement a few additional quality processes that will connect your world-class quality management system. Our last video covered the make phase. In it, you learned how to build your QMS to support the processes needed during product development. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, take a moment to do that and make sure you're subscribed to our channel so that you never miss out on hearing about new videos. Now let's dive into the approved phase of our smart methodology in building your world-class medical device QMS. By right-sizing your QMS, you should only be implementing the processes necessary for your stage in development. As a general rule of thumb, I recommend planning out your manufacturing during the design output phase of your project. You will want to involve your manufacturing team in discussions early on. These resources can provide valuable insight into the viability of your design outputs from a manufacturing perspective. Here are the quality systems you should have in place by the approved phase. You should have training, purchasing, device master records or DMR, Design outputs are the recipe for your device. Your outputs will go on to form the basis of your DMR once you reach manufacturing. Other processes include production and process controls, labeling and packaging, and labeling doesn't just refer to the label on your device. It can also include and should include your instructions for use, marketing materials, and anything else you use in conjunction with your device to describe it to the end user or regulators. You'll want to familiarize yourself with all the FDA and regulatory requirements for a unique device identification system. In Europe, the new MDR requires that any device sold must also be issued a unique identification number to help with the exchange of information. This also includes product registration, declaration of conformity, economic operators, vigilance reports, and post-market surveillance. Other procedures to focus on in this phase are receiving, incoming, in-process, and final inspections. While most people don't look forward to them, audits and inspections are meant to ensure you're delivering a safe and effective product to the market. Instead of spending weeks preparing for an audit at the expense of productivity, it's best to be audit ready at all times. Other processes to focus on, identification and traceability, device history record, change management, non-conforming materials, CAPA, and management responsibility. Here are some common myths about the approved phase. Myth number one, regulatory submissions must include all details of manufacturing processes. The reality is that's not always the case. In fact, the most common case is that manufacturing information is not included in a regulatory submission. A regulatory submission is primarily designed based on focus and the goal is to assess the safety and in some cases efficacy of a medical device with respect to the stated indications for use. This is demonstrated through sound design controls and risk management. For some medical devices, biocompatibility and sterilization may be applicable. In order to address these items, some manufacturing processes may need to be established. Generally speaking, providing these details is not included with a regulatory submission. Now, there are some classes of device where, yes, you will. PMA, class 3 devices, absolutely will scrutinize the manufacturing processes. Myth number two. You have to wait until you receive clearance or approval from regulatory bodies before you can begin manufacturing. Just not true. The reality is, according to FDA's 21 CFR Part 820, you don't have to wait at all. In fact, the wording in this regulation shows that, that it's expected you'll be moving into the manufacturing while awaiting a response to your submission. I recommend considering two important factors while awaiting on your regulatory response. First, 
the likelihood that product design will need to change as a result of regulatory review, and second, your company's aptitude for business risk. This part usually involves a balance. There will likely be some manufacturing elements that you can improve. You may be able to finalize tooling or start manufacturing of some components prior to receiving a decision on your submission. Here are best practices that I recommend for the approved phase. Number one, strive to be in a position to start selling your product the day your product receives market clearance or approval from regulatory bodies. Number two, assemble a distribution team to help with the actual selling process. This group can actually and often provide marketing support and help organize other events such as conference exhibits and product training courses. Number three, implement the world-class QMS process as we've laid out thus far. Four, use and follow the refuse to accept checklist guidance from FDA. Make sure to review this document thoroughly and follow any other guidance and best practice checklist that you can for other outside US regulatory submissions. This concludes the approved phase. Through this point, you've learned how to create, implement, and improve your world-class medical device QMS. You should be prepared now to transfer your device to manufacturing. In the next episode, we'll discuss the release phase. I'll show you how to use your QMS during manufacturing to prepare your medical device for its debut release into the market.